We're going to talk about psychology of money. Psychology of money. Something that most people do not have the right idea when it comes to money. How much money you make is kind of like your report card, but like your credit score. It's your report card as being an adult. If you have good credit, then that's a good report card. It means that you're being a good, responsible adult. If you have bad credit, well, it doesn't mean you're a bad person. It just means you had something that happened that didn't allow you to pay your bills on time. So we have the psychology of money and it's a lot like, you know, how I started it with confidence based on your ability. And we're not taught about money in schools. Our parents don't talk about it. It's taboo. And part of it is the amount of money that you make. There's an emotional attachment to that, a psychological attachment to it. And again, it's kind of your report card. It's how well you're doing in life. People that say money doesn't provide you happiness don't know where to shop because I guarantee you, if you had a lot of money, you can be happy if you know where to go shopping and what to do with that money. And people that are angry and bitter and depressed without money, guess what? As soon as you get money, they're going to be angry, bitter, and depressed. People that are greedy without money will be greedy when they have money. People are rude, will be rude when they have money. People that are nice, caring, giving, want to give to other people, want to support other people, care about other people. You give them money and that's who they're going to be. So the psychology of money, it's kind of ingrained and we need to reprogram our mind away from what our parents do. When was the last time you worried about getting enough oxygen that you were sitting in your car and you started having a panic attack that you were not going to have enough oxygen to breathe? When was the last time you actually had that thought? Like, I hope I have enough oxygen when I'm sleeping tonight or when I go to the office. Probably never, right? Why? Because there's so much out there we don't think about. It. And so if you can get the mindset around that, there's so much money out there. I don't need to think about it. I need to think about what I can do to help other people, what I can provide as a service to other people, and they will pay me for it. So that's the mindset I want you to have is there's more than enough for everybody and that there's nothing special about money. It's just a tool. That is all it is, is simply a tool. Emotional spending. I don't think people realize how much their emotions actually get involved with spending. It's a dopamine drug or a dopamine dump when they go shopping. It's like just another drug. It's just like gambling. It's just like sex. It's like alcohol or any other type of drug. There are people that um, it makes them feel better to go shopping. So emotional spending is something you really got to control and you really got to figure out what causes the emotional spending. Spending impacts a lot of people. So set your rule. I will not spend more than this amount of money. And by setting the rule, it's actually really free. Delayed gratification is one of the most powerful tools that you can use when it comes to money, that you're delaying today's pleasure for tomorrow's pleasure. You're willing to delay today to have a better future tomorrow. And most people don't do that. Most people are like, well, I got paid. Let's go party, got paid today. It's Friday night. Let's go spend all my money. When I retire, when I'm 80, I'll have all this money spent. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying delayed as in at the end of this summer or once I pay off this credit card or once I have $20,000 saved for my down payment on my house or once I pay off my car. That's the delayed gratification I'm talking about. I'm not talking about 50 years from now. But delayed gratification can be so powerful because now you're working for a goal and you can see it. You know that, hey, when I pay off this $3,000 credit card, I'm going to go on vacation and I'm going to go go scuba diving or I'm going to go to this nice dinner. That's the delayed gratification is once I've done this, then I'm going to do that. Not when I'm 80 years old. Money scripts and childhood influences. I kind of started talking about that a little bit with our childhood. You know, our parents, our grandparents, the people, their friends really can put a script on you and influence you. What I mean by script is that money script is what I'm talking about, that because of how you were raised, because of how your family taught you about it, your emotional attachment to money, your psychology of money, there's a script and we need to change that script. One, there's no shortage of money. There's more money than we ever could use. Money scripts really is what is in your head? Think of it as a prescription. What is a script that you have regarding money? Mm -hmm.